Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the alligator table. And the alligator is, is probably one of the most important organisms in the swamp. He is an engineer. First of all, as he's, uh, as he's moving through the swamp, if he doesn't find a sufficient fishing place, then he'll dig out one. He'll eat away the peat. I don't mean swallow it but he'll pull it apart and create what we call gator holes. Gator holes is a very common term for those who live around the swamp and who fish in the swamp. That's where one, most of them will hunt, is a gator hole. Out around Double Lakes and uh, Mall Hammock, there are several, probably six, eight, or 10 gator holes that are prominent fishing places. Uh, they also are, uh, they also manage to catch those organisms that are sick, weak, slow, inattentive, <laughs> not watching their business, uh, or, or those that are too old, or if, if, if maybe if they've been injured, that's the ones they catch. They do not catch the fast. They do not catch the alert. They do not catch the strong and the fastest. They, they catch those that have some weakness. Consequently, in their feeding style, they actually strengthen the population of their prey animals because their prey animals multiply and only the strong survive. Consequently, that, 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 in, that strengthens the population of all those that make their home near or in a, a gator hole. Frogs, snakes, ducks occasionally, uh, any kind of animal that uses gator holes. Uh, first thing, never give a gator a chance. Never give a gator an opportunity. They are extremely fast, extremely fast. This guy here is 12 feet long. When he was alive, he was 12 feet long. And that, that means that he could actually jump vertically out of the water at least seven, eight, or nine feet. Um, he, he's also, they're also excellent stalkers. They stalk their prey. They stalk the unaware. And they do that because of their color. Their color perfectly matches the color of the swamp water. Consequently, when they move in to, to a hunting area, they come in on, under the surface of the water and they lie right flat on the peat, just waiting for an opportunity. An opportunity is when somebody gets careless, when something doesn't, is not aware of their surroundings, uh, and so it, he, he doesn't just jump, he explodes. He actually explodes out of the water onto his prey. Uh, and I, I, I can't tell you how fast they are. It's un they're unbelievably fast. Even though they slow, pokey, crawl around on the, on the land, that's all a deception. That's all a deception because they are extremely fast. They can even run up to, I think the maximum is about 35 miles an hour. Uh, but they would already had lots of other prey long before that speed. Uh, let's look at why he can be such an efficient predator. First of all, he has two eyes, therefore he has binocular vision. Binocular vision out front, 25 degrees, 12 and a half degrees either side of center line. However, he is also aware of any motion that occurs around him because in the upper jaw and in the lower jaw, and you can see these, you can see these 
and we'll, we'll, we'll bring the camera up close and you can see the little sensors around the edge of the mouth. From 25 degrees on around to 180, uh, there are sensors. They're called pressure sensors. And they're embedded in the, jaw, in the jaws, uh, upper and lower jaws, right at the edge. If you ever look at a picture of a gator in the water, they lie with all of these things submerged. All of these pressure sensors are, are submerged in the water so that a ripple that comes from 10 feet away and when it, when it slowly moves up close and strikes him, he knows exactly where it is. So he immediately will turn his carcass, turn his, turn his head to face that direction. That way he gets maximum vision and maximum sensation from all of his receptors. Then it's just a matter of time until he explodes out of the water. Uh, his eyes, he has three eyelids. He has an upper, a lower, and a, a, a nictitating membrane that goes across his eye from front to back, from front to back. And when he goes underwater, he pulls that across his, his, his eye to, to keep the trash and debris from getting into his eye. Immediately behind his eye is his ear. This, this, line, this line right here behind his eye is his ear opening. So they can hear vibrations, hear any, any sound made in the water, uh, even the motion of fish that swim. As they swim, they create pressure waves. So he's, he's aware of their presence here. In his mouth, he has from 60 to 80 teeth. 60 to 80 teeth. I think I have one in here. Mm. No, I don't. We'll get it later. <clears throat> His teeth are hollow. His teeth are hollow because they're, they're stacked up in the jaw embryonically, just like ice cream cones, one on top of the other, on the other, on the other. And when one is broken, how would they get broken? Well, when you crush, when you bite down 2,000 pounds of pressure, something's going to give. And many times it's some of his teeth. They are replaced immediately. Within, within a week, he's got another tooth that's already come down into that socket, out of that socket. In his lifetime, alligators will will go through as many as two to three thousand teeth. Two to three thousand teeth. Notice also the curvatures in his jaw. These curves are there for a purpose. They are specifically designed to hold a critter, like an otter or a beaver or a fish or a frog or a snake, uh, whatever is in here probably is never going to get out, not alive. Um, alligators sometimes kill their prey and swallow it. If it's too big to swallow, they just snatch it back and forth and tear it apart and swallow pieces. In his stomach, he has, notice, notice here, these are all the same kind of teeth. There are, there are no incisors, premolars, molars, canines. It's all pointed holding teeth. That's all they do is hold. And they are excellent at that function. Now, <clears throat> so when they swallow an animal with bones and other uh, hard artifacts such as turtles and I have found turtle <clears throat> turtle scales in alligator stomachs <clears throat> this is what you find in their stomach these are pebbles 
of limonite, L-I-M-I-O-N-I-T-E, limonite and quartz. The uh, quartz is very hard, the limonite's a little softer. Consequently, the limonite is ground down to, to zero and it passes right on through the, the GI tract. The, uh, the, the quartz, on the other hand, is very hard. It's extremely hard. It has a hardness of, on the scale of one to 10, it has a scale of seven, which is pretty hard. And it will, as when he swallows things and he has these rocks in his stomach, the stomach does knead and contract and, and crushes whatever's in there. And these rocks act as grinding stones. They act as grinding stones to grind up whatever he eats <clears throat> into a soup. And it goes then into the, uh, into the small intestine and eventually to the large intestine. Uh, and when it comes out, out, when it comes out the other end, this is what it looks like. This is gator poop. Ta-da! <laughs> This is gator poop. <clears throat> I saw this gator pulled up on the bank over here and she stayed there for a couple of hours. And I was happened to be coming back by a little later and I saw him over there and I said, hey, that's where she was. Look what I see. I got to have some of that. <laughs> so I went out and picked me up a couple of pieces and took them home. Uh, dried them out with calcium chloride. Then I uh, sprayed them with clear, a clear seal, uh, a, a, a clear, uh, actually I used polyurethane. I should have used acrylic. Acrylic, acrylic will not yellow. See how this has turned sort of yellow? Uh, the, uh, uh, acrylic does not yellow with age. But this is, this is the color of it. And you see here where's a little chip has been broken off. It's actually white on the inside. It's actually white. There's another chip broken off over there. This is, this is a real opportunity because very few people ever get to see this. This occurs in the water 99.99% .99 of the time. And it just comes out of the, the, the cloaca and it just dissolves and disintegrates into the water. So I, I think, I think this, this is worth mentioning to, as a part of the gator's life. <clears throat> uh, in, uh, in, their, in their lifestyle, Gators often, and I don't have a model that is ideal for this, but for what we're doing, this, the point is, they often float with just, the, just the, the mouth, just the upper lip underwater. And the, sometimes the whole body will be exposed. The whole length of the body will be exposed floating on the water. And if you approach him, the first thing to disappear is the tail. The tail will go down. And as you get closer and closer, the body will begin to go under. And as you get very, very close to them, he can do one of two things. He can dive forward this way and go under, or he can dive backwards. That's a trick, a trick that very few animals can do. Seems very simple to say, but what it takes is the dynamics of the center of flotation. We hear of the term center of gravity, but this, is, this operates on the center of flotation. If he wants to dive forward, he moves the center of flotation backwards. This is all an internal function. It happens in the body cavity. All of his viscera are enclosed in a large membrane that would allow him with particular muscles to, uh, to move them forward or backwards. And that changes the center of flotation. So if he wants to sink this way, 
He just moves the center of flotation forward. This part floats, this part sinks, and he slides down that way. If he wants to dive forward, he moves the center of flotation. To, yeah, he moves the center of flotation backwards, and the and the, so the tail tends to float, and the body, the head head will go down. Once he's underwater, then he uses his extremities. He uses his feet to paddle with occasionally, not much. Here is the motor. This is his uh, this is his outboard motor. This is his locomotion. The tail also serves as a fat storage area. This is a fat store. Uh, so because they go into, into uh, sometimes they don't eat for a month, two, three, four, five. Some crocodiles over in the, uh, uh, in the African rivers, they can go for a year. They wait until the great migrations come across the river the zebras and the wildebeest and what, whatever animals are in that water are at a hazard. So they can, they can last a long time without eating. <clears throat>